I'm going to do some indirect percussion. Um, basically, what that involves is having not directly, not hitting the, the piece I'm working directly, but actually having something on the tool and striking that tool to remove uh, a flake. Um, this particular technique um, can be used for doing, um, making blades and even microblades. What I'm going to talk about is using this technique for um, reducing and producing um, bifaces. Um, the benefit of this technique is um, it minimizes or it shrinks my toolkit considerably. Um, and that's, that's one thing I, I quite like about it because using direct percussion, I have to use a much larger billet. Um, using this technique, I can use a considerably smaller uh, toolkit. So instead of having these two billets, I now have these two billets, right? Um, the, the difference is, is my hammer stone, right? Um, and I can swing that a lot harder and, um, or have a bigger hammer stone and still produce the same type of results as I would with uh, those larger billets. Um, it's, it's probably one of the more difficult techniques to do because you have to incorporate a lot more of your body. Um, the way I, I do it is I actually take my, my billet and you'll see that it has a bit of curvature to it. I, lot, I sort of lay that on my leg and then I press with my other leg and set it on the, 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 the striking platform that I'm going to, where I'm going to remove the flake. The other little thing that I've done is I've actually grooved in a little lip. And so what happens is now I can sit sit that on there and not worry about it moving and it'll actually bite in and grab the, the, the platform when I, when I hit it. Um, I've done the same thing with, with that one as well is there's actually a nice little, nice little groove that I can set and sit the, 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 the uh, deer tine onto. So basically all I'm doing is I'm putting Instead of coming down and, and striking this this platform, I'm putting my billet right on the <clears throat> right on the platform and making sure that it's nice and secure. And I'm actually squeezing with this leg into the biface, which actually pushes the flake in a little bit more. And then I'm I'm coming down on on this billet, and it'll produce the types of flakes that I want. If you hit it too hard, it's just like anything. It'll travel all the way across and, and crush or remove the other side. <clears throat> yeah, so that flake there, again, it's obsidian. It, didn't, it has a tendency to, to break, but I, I struck it there and I had a flake go all the way all the way over to there. There's part of it. The flake there. Yeah. It's all about experimenting, but instead of holding it like this, what I can actually do is hold the piece like this and This isn't the best punch to work for this in this direction. It is awkward. We'll, we'll give it a go though, just to see if it works. But I mean, <clears throat> in theory, what would happen is I would, I would strike it, come down like this, and the flake would actually come off, off this way. Let's give it a... There we go, it did work. <clears throat> and there's the flake, came off that way. 
I, I just, I'm sure there's other people that would make that, make it easier. I find it uncomfortable to do it that way, so. And basically what I'm gonna be doing, what I would do is, I would just use this technique to shape it and sort of thin it down to uh, the size that I want. And then when I, I can even use this, this particular technique to finish off the process. I'll just show you a quick section of how quickly and how effective it is. I took this edge here that had an edge there and an edge there and just by working it down fairly quickly I was able to create uh, a fairly quick edge. I mean I would definitely refine that uh, a lot more and then once I get it down, if I want to get to the sort of the finishing stages of uh, you, with using this technique, I would switch my billet to the, to the smaller one and basically, <clears throat> again, I, I'm switching to a smaller, a smaller hammer stone because I don't want such big flakes. There we go. Again, with the obsidian, basically all the flakes that come off tend to be broken, but it allows me the ability to sort of definitely <clears throat> focus where I'm going to remove a flake. It removes the, the unknown element of my swing because I've already placed the tool directly on my edge. And so it allows me that just that little bit more control in terms of getting it all to work, to come together and work make a finished tool. Obviously when you get to to this stage where you're doing much de uh, finer detail work you there may be some confusion between this and say pressure flaking because of the just the size um, but overall it's typically more the, the the features you find on the debitage is more directly related to, to actual direct soft hammer percussion. Basically, I can just keep working this using this technique. I'll see if I can actually drive off a larger, a larger flake here. What I'm going to have to do is isolate a platform. So what I'm doing is I'm just along this edge, I'm creating a spot where I've created uh, a nice, easy to see uh, platform. I've grounded down so that it, it can withstand the, the blow that I'm going to give it. And I've, I've actually put a couple of little guide flakes on either side of it to help direct it. And I've sort of lined it up with uh, a bit of a ridge that runs right through there. And so, <clears throat> the problem with any of the techniques is it's all about the support of the piece that you're flaking. If you don't have the right support or you're pushing in the wrong spot, that's where you introduce unknown variables and that's where your biface will, will actually break. And the flake broke 
but <clears throat> the flake that I knocked off started here and went all the way over to the other side and actually blew out the other edge, which, if, which is fine at this point because I actually still want to want to thin this out quite a bit. And the other nice thing about it is I've created a ridge here and a ridge over here that I can use to thin over here and sort of thin out that, that this thick spot here. This technique can be used in all the same ways other techniques are. I, I can do with hard hammer and soft hammer, right? I can do the same thing with, with this stuff, right? Um, the, the benefit of it, the two benefits are smaller toolkit, more accuracy. Um, it just, in my opinion, those are in, especially for mobile people, uh, a smaller toolkit is, is paramount, right? Who wants to lug around a big, big billet like that when you can get away with a much smaller, a much smaller tool, right? And once again, what I've done is I've isolated a little platform here and there's a ridge that runs this way. And so instead of coming in this way, I'm actually gonna drive, direct the flake this way and hopefully sort of remove that big mass right there. One of the things that helps minimize the, the blowing, the, having the flakes go to all the way to the other side and blowing out the other edge is actually having my hand <clears throat> all the way along that edge. For some reason, it just sort of stops the, because it stops the rock from blowing out the other edge. What happens is it just continues off into my hand as opposed to blowing off the, uh, the, the actual rock. And it just gives you that, it just gives you that much more support. bad. It actually removed a little less than I wanted to, um, but it still thinned out here. It actually, the flake all the went, went all the way to there, which is fine because this is what I wanted to thin down anyways, right? So um, even though I didn't get, a, get it to go from one side to the other, it actually did remove the big chunky bit that I wanted removed. <clears throat> when you see, see the billets, they actually are quite pitted. And so what's happening is that every time you hit the rock, it's actually biting in a little bit and grabbing it and sort of peeling off, peeling off that rock. You want something that, that it's, not, uh, it's not hollow so that when you hit it, it has, has the ability to transfer the energy that you've used in your swing rather than losing it in, in dead space. So the density actually helps quite a bit. Ideally what you're looking for is something that has a bit of weight to it and the ability to um, withstand the, the swing and the impact with the rock that you're, you're hitting and also at the same time the ability to actually bite in to the rock or have the rock bite into it a little bit just to grab it and, and help to, to detach the flakes. 